Hey guys, back at you with the second instalment of Whiteboard Wednesday. And what I want to do is I want to follow on the first topic um, last week, which is around principal and interest and interest only repayments. So I want to build upon the concept that we touched on last week, which was around it was possible to be able to reduce debt or reduce the amount of interest that you have to pay by taking out an interest only loan. You didn't have to take out a principal and interest loan. And I talked a little bit about flexibility. And so as I said, I'm going to build upon that um, with an example over here. Come with me. To recap, the difference between a principal and interest repayment and interest only repayment in this scenario was $625 um, per month. Now, the thing to understand between principal and interest and interest only is not all lenders, but some lenders now are, are pricing principal and interest debt more favourably than interest only debt. And that's got to do with regulations put down by APRA over the journey. So there's been some tightening with respect to government regulation on banks and wanting to ensure that their loan books are more secure. So what you're actually gonna find is if you wanted to go with the structure of an interest only repayment, there is potentially a bit of a price to pay. Part of our role as a business is to help explain that price to pay. But what I wanted to touch on here is I mentioned this flexibility and the potential use of an interest only structure to reduce debt and reduce interest, I should say, but also um, create some wealth. And the first step in that is just to help you understand that when lenders assess your capacity to borrow, so I wanna talk about borrowing capacity here. They're gonna assess your ability to repay based upon what your current commitments are. So if I wanted to go and take on an investment property and this was my own home, they're gonna take into consideration that I've got repayments of two and a half grand per month on a principal and interest type basis, if I had a principal and interest type loan. They're actually gonna load it up as well too because they're not gonna assess at just the rate I'm paying, they're gonna assess at a higher rate. No different from over here, they're gonna assess me at a higher rate and what you'll find is that some lenders, even if you've got an interest only loan will still assess you on a principal and interest type basis. What we at Finance Path have done is we, we source our funding through a number of different wholesale funders and we've been quite particular with the ones that we've used and to this point one of the reasons that we've chosen them is they've got some favourable servicing um, criteria that may change in the future but as it stands at the moment they actually assess interest only repayments, yes at a higher rate but actually at interest only repayments. What does that mean? What am I rattling on about? Well, when the time came to go and buy your next investment property, the difference in the amount that you could borrow is around $100,000. So what am I saying there? I'm saying if I had an interest only loan compared to a principal and interest loan, the borrowing capacity for that next loan, that next property I should say, would be around about $100,000. Now, that could be the difference between, now before I get to go to the next step, please understand, regardless of what a bank is gonna lend you, you should be focused on what you feel comfortable being able to afford. It's always a bottom-up philosophy. And that's what we start with most of our clients. We say, don't worry about what a lender will give you. Start with what you actually can afford and feel comfortable to repay. And that's gonna be different for different people. But in this scenario, that's a $100,000 difference. So what that would mean is that could be the difference between a property valued at say $600,000 or buying a property for $500,000. Next week, I'm gonna step you through, okay, yep, that's fine. That might be an option for me, that's a possibility. But what's the difference potentially between buying a property for 600 grand versus buying a property for $500,000? Look forward to catching you next week.